All right, so in this video, we're going to be talking about how to make your programmed piano MIDI sound more natural. Um, and I have a couple of tips, but before that, I'm going to play a before example and then an after example. So um, I have it set up on the before, and let's give that a listen. Talking to myself and I can't focus. Yeah, I'm broken. The door is closing. Wanna be a part of something more than this I've lost control of it I've lost control All right, and then now I'm gonna switch over to the after Right here, so let's listen to um, the after version of the piano Talking to myself and I can't focus Yeah, I'm broken The door is closing Wanna be a part of something more than this I've lost control of it I've lost control Okay, so I can start going through a couple things that I think might help you. Um, the first thing is going to be velocity. So when you imagine uh, a musician playing the piano, they're not playing the keys all at the same velocity, right? Um, each each note is being played slightly different um, if they were to be played live. And so if you look at the before MIDI, you can see that the velocities are all at a consistent level. So this isn't something natural that would happen. So what you can do, and what I've done here, is you can um, draw in your MIDI notes and then you can vary the velocities of each note. Um, and you, don't, you don't want them to be too far apart because that would just that would sound weird. So um, what I've done here is just taking, uh, picking out notes and then moving them up and down just to give it a more natural velocity uh, feeling. Um, another way that you can do this or even add on to it um, is for MIDI devices. Uh, I'm not sure if Logic or Pro Tools or some of the other dolls have them, but um, Ableton has a great... Uh, MIDI velocity device. Uh, so if you go over to MIDI effects and then velocity, there are some presets here and it's a preset for piano. And you can notice it on the first part of my chain. And it just kind of does what I've done manually with the velocity changes. Uh, but you set a range of um, the lowest or highest notes um, and how the velocities will be played. So this is a nice touch to add. Um, to your programmed MIDI pianos. Um, another tip I have is for the actual um, timing of the notes. Again, so if you think of someone playing the piano versus like a robot, um, there's going to be some natural timing differences um, when you play the chords or, or the keys, right? If a robot was programmed to play, they'd all play, um, they play the notes at the same exact time. So if we look at the before MIDI again, I bring this velocity down. You can see that all these notes are hitting at the same time. Um, and again, this isn't something that would occur naturally. Um, and it just doesn't feel right. Um, so you can actually give it a listen. Let's listen to the before. Talking to myself and I can't focus. Yeah, I'm broken. The door is closing. So with that velocity and timing, it just sounds like it's like pressing really hard. Um, and so what you can do is in the MIDI, just how I slightly vary the velocity, you can go into your notes and just very slightly move um, the start times around. So you can have some that start right in the beginning, some that start a little later, um, even before and after. Um, and then even the ending of the notes, you can change. So. I would go through your MIDI tracks and do that. And then that just gives it like a little bit more flair um, so that we can listen to just the new piano by itself. Um, I should have also mentioned this before, but obviously I would say the third tip is your sample choice. So you, your doll may come with a um, piano, grand piano instrument, um, but usually these aren't recorded in the best settings and they're just not programmed right. So I know that for Ableton, they pretty much um, 
sampled each individual note. Um, but the lengths that you, the lengths that purchasable um, contact libraries or other instruments that you could buy, um, they just go to greater levels to uh, accurately record the pianos at different velocities. And you just get a better sounding um, sample. So if you're looking for a realistic piano sound, I would maybe invest in some um, different products. So just for example, this was like a very cheap um, contact library called the Woodchester Piano. And it just sounds great. It was recorded on a beautiful piano, um, very meticulously um, programmed, processed. And again, we can just play it one more time. So it just sounds great. Um, That'd be my third tip. Another tip that you can do to make your pianos, program piano sound more realistic um, is to add some background um, ambiance. So if you think about, um, let's say you were recording your, a live piano, you might have some background noise and fuzz, and that kind of gives some uh, more character to the track. And so what I've added here is just a, like a room ambience that I found online. It sounds like this. Right, so it's very subtle, but um, together with the piano, it kind of gives it more of like a live recorded feeling. Um, and so together, the piano and the ambiance sound like this. So that would be my fourth tip. Um, in terms of processing that I've done, really just quite subtle stuff. Um, so I just have an EQ here, just transparent, cutting out some of the low end. Um, it's running through the custom series equalizer and a Neve EQ. Uh, these aren't really doing too much, um, but they add a lot of color. So they're actually running through these units um, giving a different uh, harmonic uh, flavor. And then I just have some EQ cuts and then it's just going through some, some reverb. So nothing crazy, but I think with those tips, um, you could really, really um, add some life and character to your piano track. So that's what you're going for. So again, just the before and after. Talking to myself and I can't focus. Yeah, I'm broken, the door is closing Wanna be a part of something more than this I've lost control of it, I've lost control